I'm a simple software engineer. But recently, I posted a video called Will ChatGPT finally replace me? To see for myself where we are with this whole thing and is it replacing us or not. In that video, I made a small typing game from scratch using ChatGPT, but I felt like I didn't really get that much out of it and certainly not as much as the general hype around it would suggest. So I spoke to some buddies at work, read your comments and today I decided to give it another shot. This time around, I got much better results. Like 90% of the code was written by AI and I want to show you how I did it. There was definitely one moment when I got it to do what I wanted and I was like okay this is some next level shit right here. But it did go a bit haywire towards the end again which was kind of funny. All in all it took me two and a half hours to go from an empty folder to a working project. And in this video I distilled that down to like five minutes or so for your entertainment. But I open sourced the code and the exact prompts that I used link in bio. So what's the project all about? It's actually something I will use and that will make me money. It's a link redirection service that takes Amazon links that I have in the videos and and directs the users to the correct Amazon store based on their geographic location. Which is something Amazon doesn't do and it's totally ridiculous. You order the groceries online and we deliver them to your door. The first thing I did is describe my requirements carefully and in as much detail as I could. And this is where I applied the first trick that I learned to tell it to ask any clarifying questions before starting work. The next trick I learned is to pre-frame it to act as a backend developer and then with that we were off to races. Now it only asked me four qualifying questions and they were mostly around some small small details like what npm package to use or how to name the database columns and that gave me hope that the overall requirements are probably clear enough. So I answered briefly without going into much detail and I even asked it to suggest the names for database columns from my initial description. From there it proceeded to explain how to set up the project and such so we can skip straight to the juicy parts now. As the first runnable piece of code it gave me this basic hello world example express project and told me to check the output in the browser. After this the coffee shop was closing so I had to pack it up and go home. And when I got there, I asked it to continue from where we left off, and from there it proceeded to write the middleware function that will extract the user's country and the source video ID. This function is the core of the project and I was able to copy paste it directly with no changes. And it worked perfectly. This is where I started to feel really good about where the project was going, even though I'm not a fan of middleware functions myself. Next up it created the link definitions file where I can write all my links together with the corresponding localized Amazon store URLs. I don't really have that many of them and I don't need a database lookup for that. And right after that it wrote the main lookup logic in the link endpoint. But this is where I wanted it to do something that I wouldn't be able to do easily on my own. I needed to support countries that don't have their own Amazon stores. In Norway for example where I live we order things from Germany or the UK Amazon store. To make it more concrete I went ahead to my YouTube dashboard, downloaded the geographical data and I copy pasted the top 30 countries. I will expand on this of course to include all of the countries but I figured I don't want to give it a super long prompt and make it lose that precious context just yet. It went ahead to create a country mapping file but then it completely ignored the prompt that I put so much effort in and it simply gave me a one-to-one -one mapping of country codes, each one to itself. So I was like, okay, do you know which countries have their own Amazon stores? And it was like, yeah, sure, I know. And then I asked it to incorporate this information into the mapping it created above. And then it finally got what I wanted it to do. This moment is when I felt like it was really saving me time. Because honestly, I don't really know how much time it would take me to create this mapping by hand. I still need to double check it, but it looked quite good on the first try. This prompt was a bit of an improvisation, because initially I wanted to ask it to implement some kind of logic to choose the correct store. But then it was like, what if I ask it to just give me the final result and skip the code? Just give me the mapping. Sometimes it's worth trying to ask it to do the work instead of trying to write the code. From there it was the race to the finish line. So I asked it to complete the code for saving the link clicks to the database and for the most part it did amazingly well. But right there at the end it started forgetting the very first middleware function it created and started imagining some code that wasn't there before. I guess I reached the limit of its context, so it was fun to see where it really happens. But it wasn't a problem, because the project was done at this point. This gave me some idea on the size of the project that I can hope to create from start to finish with ChatGPT at the moment. From that alone, I don't believe it has the capacity to replace any developer whatsoever. But who knows about the future? What do you guys think? For the record, I tested the final code locally by running a Postgres instance and it worked beautifully. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.